In section 2.3, you're introduced to density curves and one of the most important components of a statistics class, which is the normal distribution. Now, when we're talking about a density curve, we're talking about a distribution of a quantitative variable, meaning a numerical variable, that has a curve with an area of exactly one underneath it. And the nice thing about a curve that has an area of exactly one is we can slice it up into portions based on its area and find out what proportion or percentage of data falls in a certain section. So for example, let's say Selena takes the airport train from the main terminal to get to work every day. The airport just opened a new walkway that allows her to get to the bookstore that she works at in four minutes. Will it be faster to walk or take the train to work? Now the problem is going to throw some data at us in the form of a dot plot, which shows the travel times for the last 1,000 days that Selena arrived at work by walking. Now when we look at this dot plot down here, we can see that it's approximately flat, a uniform distribution. right? We can see that it's ranging from two minutes to five minutes that it takes her to walk to this bookstore. And the question is asking us, would it be faster to take this new train, which arrives in four minutes? So in other words, Here's four minutes, okay? How often does she end up taking more than four minutes? Okay, that's the part of this graph where it would have been quicker to take the train. So on the right, we have our model of this distribution. So a model simplifies the distribution. We're saying that this is a uniform distribution, right? In reality, it doesn't look perfectly like a rectangle on the right here, right? But models aren't meant meant to match reality. They're just meant to kind of give us a good impression to simulate reality. So we have the same scale along the bottom. All right, we have that flat line that's perfectly flat. All right, and this height here we're choosing. Okay, we're choosing it as one third because the bottom of this rectangle is three from two to five. So if we choose a height of one third, okay, and we do base times height, those are backwards, but you get it. Uh, one third times three would equal an area of one. So the area of this entire rectangle over here is one. Okay, And the reason that we like that is because now if we say we want to find the probability that she takes longer than four minutes, we're just going to find the area of this section right here. Okay, And this blue section is going to have that same height, one third. All right, The base of this one, four to five, is a one. So the area of base times height, one third or 0.333. So about 33% of the time, she's gonna save time by taking the train to work. Now at this point in the course, we've already talked a lot about how the mean is related to the median in say a skewed distribution or an approximately symmetric distribution. So just to give a little bit information on that, the mean is really the balance point of the distribution. Okay, it's the point where if we had a little fulcrum, right, it's going to balance perfectly. So we can see the mean is right that uh, red triangle there. All right, if we moved it over to the left, just kind of like on a seesaw or a, a lever, um, it wouldn't balance in any other position other than right there. That is where the mean would be in this distribution. Okay, the median, on the other hand, is the center point. It's dividing the, the area under the curve in half. All right, in an approximately normal distribution like this one, the mean and the median are going to be essentially the same. Okay, once we have a skew, the tail pulls the mean towards it. Okay, so the median is this line right here. All right, and the mean is going to be to the right of that because the skew pulls it towards the tail. Now, the most prominent kind of density curve, and the one that we'll use over and over again in this course, is the curve called the normal distribution. That's that bell-shaped symmetric curve that we've seen a few times already. We can see it here in this histogram, which is displaying the basic skill scores of a number of students in Gary, Indiana. It has a big peak right around seven, okay, and it tapers off the farther we move away from seven. Now, the thing to note about this curve is it happens naturally, and it happens in lots of things surrounding us uh, in everyday life and in things where it doesn't happen we'll eventually learn how we can kind of force it into this curve there are infinite number of normal distributions there's one standardized normal distribution where our mean is zero and our standard deviation is one but it's a normal distribution if we're talking about the heights of males or the weights of elephants or gpas or sat scores etc 
Okay, the shape of all these distributions are going to be symmetric, single peaked, and bell shaped. The center, the mean, is going to be at the midpoint of that symmetric curve, right in the middle. And in, since it's approximately symmetric, it'll be the same as the median. And then the spread is the standard deviation. This is what we want to use for any curve that's approximately symmetric. All right, it's telling us the average distance from the mean for an entire distribution. All right, and we can see it represented up here in these graphs. Not quite the width of a full side here, a little bit less than half of the curve of that distribution. So applying that all to this histogram here, the ITBS basic skills test results can be described fully with just two numbers. We need to know the mean, 6.84, and the standard deviation, which in this case is 1.55. And we can describe a normal curve using the notation N parentheses, and then we're gonna write the mean comma standard deviation. So for this curve up here, we would write it as N 6.84, which is the mean right in the middle, standard deviation of 1.55. That's the average difference of each test score from the mean of 6.84.